In the U.S., eight people were killed in a shooting rampage. Six of the victims are Asian American women. A suspect is now charged in their murders, and as Jackson Prosco explains, there are questions about whether this attack was a hate crime. In less than an hour, three shootings targeted three Atlanta area spas, unfolding in rapid succession. While at that location, we received another call across the street at Shots Fire. Of the eight people killed, seven are women and six are Asian American. The suspect, 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long, was arrested late Tuesday, identified by his parents after police released surveillance footage. And yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Despite the targeted nature of the attack, police were quick to downplay any suggestion of a hate crime, based on what they say the suspect told them. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction. He sees them as an outlet for him, that something that he shouldn't be doing, and that uh, an issue with porn, and that he was attempting to take out that temptation. But the context is inescapable. According to the group Stop AAPI Hate, Asian Americans have reported being the victims of at least 3,800 separate hate crimes in the U.S. during the past year, some deadly. A crime against any community is a crime against us all. The rhetoric from former President Donald Trump about the origins of the pandemic China virus. coincided with the rise in race-based attacks which continue to this day. But knowing the, the increasing level of hate crime against our Asian American uh, brothers and sisters, we also want to speak out in um, solidarity with them. Police say the suspect in Atlanta not only admitted to carrying out the shootings, but may have planned to drive to Florida to carry out more attacks. Whatever his motive, his alleged actions have left the community already on edge, really. Jackson Prosco, Global News, Washington. Hello, everybody. Oh, man. So, <laughs> yeah, we have another one of those shootings. It's been a while. In fact, apparently there's only been one shooting in 2020 on the mass level. But, yeah, this one. Uh... That's not what I wanted to click. I know that name. Pretty sure I covered a previous article of hers. Anyways. I don't get stuck on that. I think... Sh I might be thinking of a different one. Anyways. Guess get out of there. So, suspect arrested after eight people, including six Asian women, were killed at Atlanta area businesses. Uh, take me to the link. Is that the link? Never mind, that's not the link. Uh, let's look at this one. I haven't looked at this one yet. But yeah, this is uh, quite an interesting uh, event, you could say. Uh, looking at it last night and uh, for a good while today. And I think I've got enough stuff to show you. Uh, well, i got more than enough stuff. So I can't. There's no way I could do it in one show. There's lots to cover here. Uh, officials who said, sorry, cats, Atlanta shooting suspect was having a bad day, faces criticism. A suspect in three attacks that killed eight people at Atlanta area spas on Tuesday had been charged with eight counts of murder and one count of aggra aggravated assault in Cherokee County, 33. Mr. CC 33 officials announced on Wednesday afternoon that Robert Aaron Long, 21, has been charged with four counts of murder and one count of assault in the shooting involving three women and two men at Young's Asian v Massage Wednesday Village. He has also been charged with murder in Atlanta, 
where four other women were killed in two separate attacks. The sheriff's office said Long confessed to the crime and told officials about a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. They said it's too early to determine whether he'll be charged with a hate crime. Six women of Asian descent are among the dead, raising suspicions of a hate crime. Long claims race did not play a role in his decision to target the businesses. Authorities said relying detail, relaying details from questioning the gunman. Long is believed to have frequent, frequented these places, and he may have been lashing out, Cherokee County Sheriff Frank Reynolds said after noting that the suspect indicated to investigators that he had a, a sexual addiction. Tuesday's violence has amplified fears in the Asian American community, which has already been experiencing a spike in attacks and harassment since the coronavirus pandemic began. Sheriff's official... Uh, faces criticism. Feelings of anger within the community increased late Wednesday as comments made by a Cherokee County Sheriff's Office official uh, sorry, and a post on his Facebook page were perceived as inappropriate, insensitive, and anti-Asian. The Sheriff's Office spokesman, Captain Jay Baker, said Wednesday that Long was pretty much fed up and kind of at the end of his rope. Yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Baker said, Long does claim that it was not racially motivated and cautioned that the investigation is still early. He added that Long apparently had an issue. What he considers a sex addiction and sees the, the, these locations as a temptation for him to be for him that he wanted to eliminate. Baker's comments that Long was having a bad day were lambasted on social media. California Rep Ted Lou, or, uh, Lou tweeted in response, Based on today's press conference, I would not have conf confidence in the Cherokee Ch County Sheriff's Office to conduct a fair investigation that respected the Asian victims. Hit the below um, this guy. If the below Facebook post is accurate and based on today's press conference, I wouldn't know. Yeah, okay, he says the same thing. Um, the it then Nigayan, Nigayan, instead of even considering the killing of six Asian women a hate crime, Captain Jay Baker said it was a really bad day for the suspect. The shirt he likes says COVID 19 imported virus from China. I wonder if these are related. Uh, look at that. I didn't see the shirt. Who's wearing this shirt? Uh, this tweet is unavailable. Come on. Hey, Baker. <laughs> yep. It's like the Coors Light uh, characters, the font. I got June Aram, so Sullinger. I got the Cherokee Strong shirt. Love it. Mm. This was April 2nd of 2020. I don't know, it's like a play on making fun of, you know, Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you're just digging for stuff in that situation. Uh, following those remarks, screenshots of Baker's Facebook account uh, surfaced, showing a post that promoted t-shirts amplifying a racist perception of coronavirus. Place your order while they la- Okay, we already read that. 
Uh, Baker didn't immediately respond to NPR's request for comment. The victims. As of early Wednesday afternoon, only half the victims had been publicly identified. The sheriff's office in Cherokee County identified the people who were killed there as Delana Ashley Young, 33, of Ackworth, Paul Andre Michaels, 54, of Atlanta, uh, Zyoji Tan, uh, 49, of Kennesaw, who was previously identified by the sheriff's office as Zhao Ji Yan, Dafu Fang, 44 of an unknown address. In addition, uh, LCS R. Hernandez Ortez, uh, Ortiz, 30 of Ackworth, was injured. The sheriff's office said his condition has been listed as stable. Police in Atlanta said they were not yet publicly naming the victims from the two shootings in that city. A representative said the department is still working to identify them. Long claims attacks weren't racially motivated. Uh, responding to the questions of whether the shootings might be a hate crime, Atlanta Police Chief Rodney Bryant said, We are still early in this, in this investigation. We cannot make that determina determination at this moment. This was a tragic day with many victims. Atlanta Mayor Kesha Lance Bottoms said at a late morning news conference on Wednesday, she said the businesses targeted in Atlanta had not been on the city's radar as potential sites of crime or trouble. In a later interview, interview with CNN, Bottoms said she was aware of the suspect's claims that the killings were not racially motivated, but I am taking that with a grain of salt. This is a man who murdered eight people in cold blood. All of the victims in Atlanta were Asian. N no, they weren't. <laughs> no, they weren't. It is very uh, difficult to ignore that the Asian community has once again been targeted and is happening over the country. The shocking violence could have been worse, Bottom said, noting that when they were he were he was arrested, Long was heading to Florida, where he seemed to be planning to carry out some similar violence. Reynolds said his county is mostly a bedroom community and had uh, oh bedroom community and had just one murder in the past year. We don't have a lot of crime in that area. He acted. Or he added, you mean like not even Asian crime? Or, I mean, Asian hate crime, I should say. Just a little, very, um, low crime altogether, I guess. Long was initially identified through surveillance camera, camera footage from one of the crime scenes, the sheriff said. After his agency posted images on social media, Long's parents got in touch to say they believed it was their son in the pictures. They were very distraught, and they were very helpful in this apprehension, Reynolds said. Because of the family's tip, uh, police were able to track Long's cell phone, which helped them narrow his movements after the attacks. Responses from the Asian American community. The group Stop AAPI Hate says it has received nearly 3,800 reports of what is described as hate incidents, including verbal harassment and physical assault since the COVID-19 pandemic began last March. In the aftermath of the Atlanta area attacks, officials in cities such as New York and Seattle said they were bo would boost their law enforcement presence in Asian American communities. On Wednesday, Asian Americans Advancing Justice Atlanta, Atlanta issued a statement saying that although details are still emerging, the broader t context of racial tension is the U in the U.S. cannot be ignored. While anti-Asian violence is woven throughout our nation's history, the Trump administration's restlessness, or sorry, relentless scapegoating of Asians for the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has increased those incidents, said Advocacy Group. Advocacy. <laughs> Advocate, and you know the word, the group, <laughs> which is an affi affiliate of a national organization. We're calling an on our on our allies across communities of color to stand with us in grief and solidarity against racist violence in all its forms," said Stephanie Chow, the Atlanta group's executive director. <clears throat> All right. How the attacks unfolded. The first attack targeted Young's Asian ma Massage in Actworth in Cherokee County, northwest of Atlanta, 
where the sheriff's office said four people died and at least one person was injured. The victims were two Asian women, a white woman, and a white man, according to Atlanta Journal Const Constitution. Citing Baker, a fifth victim, a Hispanic man, was taken to the hospital for his injuries. Surveillance footage from a neighboring business appeared to show Long's Hyundai Tux 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 Tuxen SUV uh, entering the spa's strip mall parking lot around 4.50 p.m. ET. Long is from Woodstock, GA, which is a Cherokee County. So he drives an Asian vehicle. Just a note. Uh, the second and third attacks came about one hour later on Piedmont Road in northeast Atlanta. Women who called emergency dispatchers to ask for help at the pair uh, of Atlanta spas urged police to come quickly. According to 991 audio that was released on Wednesday, we'll listen to that later, uh, the first call came from a woman at Gold Spa who said a man had come come in with a gun. The dispatcher asked where the man was. I don't know. I'm hiding right now, the woman replied. Officers arrived at the spa less than two minutes after the dispatch call went out. According to police, they found three women dead from gunshot wounds inside. The second 911 call came in about nine minutes about in, in about nine minutes later from a woman at Aromatherapy Spa almost directly across the street. Police were dispatched on a report of gunshots fired and arrived two minutes later. When they entered the business, they found that a fourth woman had been killed. Long is arrested. From Atlanta, the suspect fled to, south, uh, to the south as police spread the alarm uh, to be on the lookout for his vehicle as he drove south on Interstate 75. The authorities set a trap for him. Around 8 p.m., Crisp County, uh, another CC33, Sheriff Billy Hancock said his agency got word that a murder suspect out of North Georgia was getting close to entering our county. Some 30 minutes later, Georgia State Patrol troopers performed a maneuver on Long's SUV that caused it to spin out of control. Hancock said the suspect was taken into custody without incident and taken to the county jail. He said Long was later transferred back to Cherokee County. A 9mm firearm was recovered during the traffic stop of Long's vehicle, the Cherokee Sheriff's County, county Sheriff's Office said. It is unclear exactly when that weapon was purchased but an employee at Big Woods Goods <laughs> Big Woods Goods in Holly Springs uh, told the Atlanta Journal Constitution that Long sorry, I gotta fix my mic that Long bought a gun on Tuesday before the shooting rampage as for, the, as for what Long's plan might have been in Florida, Baker said he understood the gunman wanted to target some type of porn industry in that state. The FBI, FBI is in assisting both Cherokee County and Atlanta police in handling the, the case. Kevin Rosen, a spokesman from the FBI Atlanta office, told NPR. I want to know more about the porn industry thing. Like, what porn industry is he going to target? Was he going to target? Was it Asian porn? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, doesn't really sound to me like he was specifically targeting any group of people, but let's read on. Because there is definitely more to that case that I may... I, uh, I believe this has nothing to do with race other than how it's being spun. But to be continued. As of Wednesday afternoon, NPR member stated GP, uh, GPB reported Long has, been, has since been moved to the Cherokee County Adult Detention Center and has been interviewed by both the Atlanta Police Department and FBI. Long is expected to be arraigned Thursday morning. The official response. Yesterday was a tra tragic day across our state, Bottom said. The mayor added that she had been in touch with the White House about the case and that President Biden offered federal assistance. 
Biden spoke about the killings on Wednesday, saying he was briefed on a phone call with Attorney General Merrick Garland and FBI Director Christopher Wray. Whatever the motivation here, I know that Asian Americans are very concerned, Biden said in the Oval Office, noting a rise in violence targeting, targeting that community within the United States. But I am making no connection at that moment, at this moment, to the motivation of the killer. The president added, "I'm waiting for an answer." As the investigation proceeds from the FBI and from the Justice Department, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp said he and his first la lady, Marty Kemp, are heartbroken and disgusted by the heinous shootings that took place last night. We continue to pray for the families and loved ones of the victims. These horrific crimes have no place in Georgia, he added. Georgia State Rep. B. Nagayan pulled no punches in characterizing the deadly shootings. This is a result of xenophobic rhetoric against Asians in America, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, she said. This is a developing story. Yada, yada, yada. Really? It's a very interesting take. Uh... Should we listen to this audio? 911 calls real quick. Let's do it. Redacted? What's this? I want to see what it says. Redacted. Okay, that's not interesting. All right, first call. I'm going to mute my mic. I'm going to put on one for the 7 I'm going to say it's Repeat the address. Yeah, of course. Uh, we need in your library right now, so can you help me come? Okay. Repeat the address. 1916 P. You need police, fire, or an ambulance? Huh? Police, fire, or an ambulance? Who I do don't you, know. Who we do need you a need? Library. We need a library here. That guy, that's why we need a uh, police, you know. Is a robbery there? Yeah. Okay, what's, is this a house apartment or business? Cold spa. I can't hear you? Cold spa. Okay. All right, you have a description oh, of the male? Pretty good. Oh, holy. Do you have Thank a description you. of him, ma'am? Oh, we need to hide him right now, that's why. Pretty good. Is it a male or female? They have a gun, but it's like not a real gun, that's why. They have a gun, you said? Yeah, but I should not be a part this way. Where is he at in the building? Um, this is called the spa. I know. Where is the person who is robbing the spa? Where is he right now? I don't know. I'm hiding right now. Okay. Uh, did you have a description of him? Did you see him? Oh, yeah. Just a white guy. A white male? What is he wearing? I don't know. Please come, okay? What's your name, ma'am? My name is Kim. Okay. All right. What room are you in? Thank you, please.
just for the emergency. Hi, on uh, 19107, take my road. You said B. Aroma therapy stuff. You said 910, Pete my road. 91907, Piedmont Road. 1907, Piedmont Road. And what was the suite number? B. Suite B. Suite B is in Baker? Yeah. Yes. And you need to find a permit police or an ambulance? Ambulance, both of them. Because Hold on, you know, don't hang up. Ladies. Hold on one moment. Some guy came in, you know. EMS, what is the address of the emergency? Call the 1907 Piedmont Road. There's 1907 Piedmont Road, Northeast. Suite B is in okay. Baker. Okay, just a second here. Okay, and what's the name of the location? Uh, Aroma Therapy Spa. Say the name one more time. Aroma Therapy Spa. Okay, and say the location just to make sure I have it one more time on Piedmont Road. 1907 Piedmont Road. And what is the phone number that you're calling from? And what is your name? My name's Mina. You, you say your name one more time. Mina. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Some, I don't know yet, but I just got a call from one of my friends and... They say some guy came in, you know, uh, the, we hear the gunshot and, you know, the lady is passed out, like, in front of the door. Okay, and everybody's scared, so everybody hiding. So I don't know what's going on exactly, but I need the ambulance or something over there in the location, please. Okay, at this location. Okay, one second. I didn't quite understand you, but let me know, let my crew know to be careful. Time. Okay, so what happened? <sighs> I, didn't quite I don't know you. exactly. I, I I I'm not there yet, but yes, um 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 some guy came in and shot the gun. So everybody heard the gunshot, and um some lady got hurt. I think, and you know everybody's scared, so they hiding in the behind. But uh, the lady passed out. Okay, so, okay, let me just let everybody know what's going on, and I understand you're not there. Okay, one second. Okay. Do you know how old she is? She is uh, 60, so somewhere around there. Was she awake? <laughs> and we're on the way, No, she passed okay? out. Okay, and was she breathing? This auto-generated caption is just terrible. I'm going to turn it off. It doesn't, it doesn't pick up the words at all. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not there. Yes, ma'am. But you're giving me some good information. Thank you so much. Just bear with me, okay? I understand you're not there, and I'm going to put down unknown for the rest of the information. Okay? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Atlanta, go ahead and start PD fire with your operator number. Sarah, right on 5846. Okay, I'm 754. Oh. Okay, thank you. Miss Nina, thank you so much. Miss Nina? <sighs> yes, yes. Okay, I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Let me ask you this. Where did you say the people are hiding? Stay behind the back, like, we have a bike. Okay. Like, They're hiding area. inside, inside the business? Yes. Yes, inside the business. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's that. All right, looked at that. Um, 
So this is CNN one. I what was in this one? Uh, let's see. What's this from? All right. Okay. State and federal investigators are scrambling to learn more about Robert Aaron Long, the suspect in a string of deadly shootings, yada yada. Not much information, blah blah blah. He is being held without bond in Cherokee County, where he faces four counts of murder and charge of aggravated assault. According to the county sheriff's office, he has also been charged with more four with more four counts of murder. That department said uh, these shootings. Eight. Four killed in the shootings near Woodstock where Delana that's the white woman by the way. Delana Ashley Young, thirty-three of Ackworth. Paul Andre Michaels or is it Michelle's? So that's Michelle's actually. 54, Atlanta, and then Zao G. Tan. So it's the same. The same names. But that's not all of them. I think there's a... There's a full list somewhere else. I'll have to find it. Uh, 150 miles. He's got that very... Uh, skinny little kind of creepy weirdo look going so he's perfect for the part he's like an ins incel thing and they kind of in one of the articles they make a comparison to the incel uh some other shooting that was involving an incel actually i found had found the article before i had read it in an article today like in a different article about this shooting there was a one in canada about an incel that attacks a spa, kills a Fil Filipino woman, but you know, you didn't hear anyone freaking about, about hate crimes then. Um, suspect did take responsibility, same information. Suspect had been treated for sexual addiction. Sheriff Frank Reynolds of Cherokee County, where the Atworth uh, shootings took place, told reporters long made indicators that he has some issues, potentially sexual addiction, and may have fre frequented some of these places in the past. Reynolds said those issues could be the motivation behind the shooting. A law enforcement source said that a suspect was recently kicked out of a house by his family due to his sexual addiction, which the source said included frequently spending hours on end watching pornography online. According to an incident report from Cherokee County Sheriff's Office, a 911 caller said the suspect could possibly be his son and does have a tracker on his phone. Another anonymous caller to 911 told dispatch the suspect was kicked out of his parents' house last night, adding that he was emotional. The incident report, uh, report says, It is not clear whether the businesses affected were places of sex work. During a news conference on Tuesday, Atlanta Mayor and Las Bonas business... Uh, businesses were legally operating and had not previously been on the Atlanta Police Department's radar. We're not about to get into victim blaming, victim shaming here. As far as we know, Atlanta, in Atlanta, we have not had any, any 911 calls from that location. I believe one minor call on someone stealing some keys, Bottom said. So we don't know what, uh, we don't know additional information about what his motives were. But we certainly will not begin to blame victims. Tyler Bayless said he shared a house unit with Long at Maverick Recovery, a rehab facility in Roswell, Georgia, between August 20, 2019 and January of February or February of 2020. He said that most residents were suffering from drug or alcohol addiction, but Long was being treated for sex addiction. It was some something that absolutely would torture him, Bayless said. He uh, said Long was a deeply religious person. He would often go on tangents about his inter interpretation of the Bible and was distraught about his addiction to sex. 
Bayless said that on multiple occasions during his stay at the facility, Long told him that he had relapsed and gone to massage parlors explicitly to engage in sex acts. After hearing Long was the suspect in the shootings, Bayless said he was shocked at the, that his former roommate would, would do such a thing. Mason Clements, who was listed as registered agent at Maverick Recovery and Business Filings, said in a text message that I am unable to comment on any client past, present, or future due to confidentiality agreements. Another former roommate of Long's also told CNN that Long had been in rehabilitation for sex addiction and that in summer 2020, he had lived with Long at a transition house for people living leaving rehab, though he declined to name the facility or divulge the state uh, where it's located. He said he had not spoken to Long in a long time. He recognized Long from the surveillance footage disseminated by the authorities, he said, and Cherokee County dispatch records indicate the ex-roommate called police Tuesday night. Um, a Facebook spokesperson confirmed to CNN they removed an Instagram account that the company believed was linked to Long. Of course they did. They don't want you to look looking at his stuff. The account had been in inactive for some time, the spokesman sa spokesperson said. A screenshot of the account obtained by CNN showed it used the name Aaron Long and the bio section caption read pizza guns drums music family and god this pretty much sums up my life it's a pretty good life long told police the shootings were not racially motivated according to baker of the cherokee county sheriff's office baker also referenced long's sex addiction saying that long sees this uh, positive temptation that he wants to eliminate According to the two law enforcement sources involved in the investigation, Long attempted to justify his actions when he told police he thought about killing himself, but decided instead to help others with sexual addictions by targeting spas. Inves investigators believe that when he was captured, Long might have been on en, en route to Florida to pe perpetrate more shootings. Uh... Oh, yeah. There's one article about guns. I don't know if it was this one. I have to go digging for it, probably. Gun was purchased legally. Long had a 9mm firearm in his car when, when he was arrested, Baker said. Wait, before I go into this, I do have... Where is it? The Facebook of... Tyler Baseless, which does have some interesting information here. I lived with Robert Aaron Long for a few months. I can tell you right now that this is not racially motivated killing, but the product of an emotionally disturbed young man who was religious to the point of mania and who felt deep shame about why he frequented these places. I wonder how this would have gone. Uh, gone off if he had been in an environment where he wasn't repeatedly told how sinful he was for the things that drove him. What a tragic loss of life and a kid that was all around one of the sweeter people you meet. And there was a virtue signaling social justice friend of his here. Uh, was it here? The simple agreement with most religions in most cases makes you at minimum complacent complicit in racism, if not racist yourself. Violent crimes against people of Asian descent have increased in recent years a great deal. Dismissing that, these lo lost lives, all of which were of Asian descent, nope, uh, were the result of a misunderstood sweet guy without a without at least entertaining the idea that he may have had racist ideals is a bit naive. I also think it could be misconstrued as white bias and dismissive of the fact that Asian Americans have been targeted. Closeted racists have been behaving in emboldened ways over these last four years, especially with with shootings. I am truly sorry you knew less about him than you thought, but man, we cannot immediately assume a racially focused shooting must be for other reasons aside from racism. Well, <laughs> you could flip that, but like you can't just assume it's racism just because there are other races involved. <sighs> Especially when the dude is white. 
Yeah. So automatically, because he's white, he's a racist, or he's racially motivated because he's white. That's very racist. <laughs> oh man, these people, are so brainwashed. If he's angry at the judgment of religious folk, why were they not his targets? If he loathed himself, why wasn't he his own target? Why was it easier to justify the killings of Asian women? Is religious oppression at fault? Hell yes. But is racism not even involved? Nah. My prayer is for the families of the victims, but I also pray that cowards like this young man choose to do something else with their hate and pain in the future. So, yeah. Uh, there was one of the responses by Tyler here I wanted to look at or read to you. Um, is it this one? Ah, here we go. So... Well, I don't know how many mass murders you've had a relationship with, w ra blah, 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 relationship with, but I promise it's pretty unnerving to find out you hung out with one, palled around with, cracked jokes, so on and so forth. But it's pretty unnerving. You can call my point one-sided, or that I didn't know him as well as I, d as I think I did. But I can promise you, I knew him better than you did. Here was a guy who would ask me to hang onto his knife, so disturbed was he upon returning from one of his m massage parlors, of the idea of harming himself, who would look at me in the eye and tell me how having sex before he was married kept him from the grace of God, how he was a sinner, and so on and so, so on. None of this, by the way, detracts from the fact that he killed people and deserves to be in jail for the rest of his life. Maybe now... Not, now's not the time to compare re, re, relative levels of wokeness. Sheesh. All I can do is speak to my own experience with this guy as it regards to the specific part of his life. Anyway, so that was interesting stuff there. It gives you a little look into the guy's character, the, the attacker, the shooter guy. Robert. There, long. Now, when in time a little here and just a quick type type in the search here coronavirus Chinese xenophobia if you do remember at the beginning of this uh, event this 201 event <laughs> the pandemic that is um, they were fueling a lot of um, of this coronavirus xenophobia against Asian people populations that was their original push was uh, early well, around a year ago from the looks of it it was all you know around March it started in March probably maybe a month earlier around that time I'm not gonna read any of these articles because you probably remember enough of them yourself but yeah they were pushing that agenda early on then one year later, they've repeated that cycle. There's been a lot of cycling since uh, Biden took presidency. Recycling stories and um, whatnot. Uh, also interesting. Uh, where is it? So I'm just looking through my tabs. So had, so before this attack, I believe it was March 11th, 311, that Biden gave this speech. If it'll ever load. Probably, probably helps the hit play, but maybe not. They are un-American. 
Too often, we've turned against one another. A mask, the easiest thing to do to save lives. Sometimes it divides us. States, put it against one another. Instead of working with each other, vicious hate crimes against Asian Americans who've been attacked, harassed, blamed, and scapegoated. At this very moment, so many of them, our fellow Americans, they're on the front lines of this pandemic trying to save lives. And still, still, they're forced to live in fear for their lives just walking down streets in America. It's wrong, it's un-American, and it must stop. We're clean, but China's... Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, had referred to COVID-19 as the China virus. Hate incidents against Asian Americans have reached an alarming level during the pandemic, with a UN report citing a sharp rise in vandalism, physical assaults and robberies against Asian American people, businesses and community centers. U.S. lawmakers say they will reintroduce a bill to boost support for law enforcement agencies to address hate crimes related to the pandemic. Prince William def uh, and those footage the footage they showed of the attacks most of them were not white white on Asian it was black and Asian and that's something that's been going on uh, lately there's a lot of black on Asian violence I actually uh, witnessed some fighting on Twitter between the two uh, groups <laughs> so and then they all tie it to white supremacy somehow it's kind of really ridiculous but yeah um, okay so there was that speech then hold on I believe I have it in another window yep oh wait, wait there's a story though too give me f a moment here All right, so I'm not going to go through this heavy five fast facts. I'm just going to jump to the part that's interesting. Uh, where is it? Oops. Okay. So, this Dr. Michelle Ah, uh, a state senator in Georgia, spoke out against anti Asian racism the day before the shooting. She said the issue does not get enough public attention and called anti-Asian racism during the pandemic a new chapter in a very old story. Incidents include elderly Asians being physically assaulted, shoved to the ground and stabbed, and Asian pedestrians spit on in the street. She said, middle school students told an Asian classmate, people like me were a cause of the so-called China virus and Kung flu. When he told them he was not Chinese, they repeatedly punched him in the face, she said. One day before saying that there needs to be more public attention. And uh, let's go to her Twitter. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Let's find her. There we go. Also to note that Biden had made his speech on March 11th, which is six days between then and the 17th, which is mm, the shooting happened the 16th, I think. And then all this stuff came out on the 17th. Anyways, here's this Dr. Michelle Ah. Racism against AAPI 
Americans is not new. Authorization of AAPI Americans is not new. But the motto of the United States is E pluribus unum unum out of many one. Asian Americans are part of the country's plurality. We are some of the many and we are part of that one. Let's see if this This was March 15, yeah, so it was the 16th, the shooting. So I rise today to speak about a topic that I feel has not received enough attention over the past year. It's a new chapter in a very old story. And sometimes we see it play out in videos, sometimes it's in cell phone recordings, sometimes it's footage off of building security cameras, but always it is horrifying. Asian elders being violently, sometimes fatally, physically assaulted, we see octogenarians being shoved to the ground, elderly women being slashed at with knives or assaulted with thrown acid, Asian pedestrians being verbally accosted, threatened, spit on, a middle school student being told by his classmates that people like him were the cause of the so-called China virus and Kung flu, and when he protested, noting his family wasn't even Chinese, he was repeatedly punched in the face by his own classmates. According to a report released earlier this month, violence against Asian Americans has increased by nearly 150% in the past year. But the vast majority of these incidents aren't recorded and shared on social media, and many if not most are never reported at all. In the past year, the organization Stop AAPI Hate, which tracks discrimination against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, has received more than 3,000 first-hand accounts of anti-Asian American harassment or attacks compared to roughly 100 incidents annually in the previous years. And you know, not to perpetuate the stereotype that Asian people are good at math, but by my calculation, that's a 30-fold increase in what look to be racially motivated crimes. So larger cities with higher densities of AAPI residents have garnered most of the news coverage on this front. But Georgia should not consider itself immune from this epidemic. And to be clear, the epidemic I'm referring to is not COVID-19, but racism towards Asian Americans. In the last year, 32 incidents of hate crimes towards our AAPI community here in Atlanta have been reported. This 32. Couldn't it just one more? He could have had the 33. That's all I have to say. Includes one incident in which one customer at a store assaulted another Asian customer, shouting, and I quote, effing nasty, dirty conspiracy Chinese. You're why we gotta wear masks, you disease spreading B word. F your people. It includes an incident in a pharmacy where an Asian customer was aggressively sprayed all over her body with Lysol and told, quote, you're the infection, go home, we don't want you here. And it includes incidents covered last April in the AJC where racist plaques were posted on private property. These plaques read, quote, Wuhan plague and depicted Winnie the Pooh eating a bat with chopsticks below the words. Charming. And the thing is racism against API Americans is not new. Otherization or exoticization of AAPI Americans is not new. Violence against AAPI Americans is not new. Recall that our country once built internment camps for Japanese Americans during World War II simply because our country could not conceive that people who looked as foreign as I do could be trusted to have allegiance to America. The key to social change is participation, especially when you feel that voices like yours aren't always heard. That's why I'm here. That's why I know the senator from the 5th is here, because Asian Americans are an important part of our communities. They are an important part of Georgia. And they, we, are an important part of the fabric of this country. The motto of the United States is E Pluribus Unum. It means out of many, one. Asian Americans are part of our country's plurality. We are some of the many, and we are part of that one. And all I'm asking right now as the first East Asian state senator in Georgia is simply to fully consider us as part of your communities. Recognize that we need help, we need protection, and we need people in power to stand up with us against hate. Being elected to represent our communities means representing 
everyone in our communities. And I implore you today to raise your awareness and stand up against discrimination towards our Asian American neighbors and friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. My bad, I'm on mute. I was just saying that there was more uh, to this Dr. Michelle Ah, and this is it right here. So apologies for being on mute. Uh, what she says here is, What's more dangerous to women and girls? Trans girls playing sports or men with guns? We will work on real problems or just look away again. I want our universal background check bill. SB 179 to get a hearing and if not I want someone to explain to my face why March 17 2021 so there's some guy named Kyle Patel we introduced our bill a month ago and it still hasn't been considered. The senator took the floor yesterday to proclaim the shootings weren't gun violence. No one from the Republican caucus has even cared to talk about how we will prevent another tragedy like this from occurring. Uh, this actually actually segue, seg segues into the next article I wanted to show. Just, hold on, I'm distracted by things. That's her speech. Okay. So here. Just no weight gun laws allowed Robert Aaron Long to quickly, quickly buy a gun. Accused Atlanta area spa shooter Robert Aaron Long reportedly had no trouble buying a gun at a firearms dealership in Cherokee County on the day of the attacks, thanks to Georgia no weight gun laws. The Peach State does not require a waiting period for firearm sales, which means a person may purchase one from a federally licensed gun seller merely if they pass a background check. Well, he passed a background check. <laughs> Long was not was who was charged with four counts of murder and one count of assault for the first shooting in Cherokee County. Bought a gun from Big Woods Goods, a Cherokee County, Matt Kilgo, Kilgo, an attorney for the store, confirmed to Newsweek. He said the store is cooperating with investigators uh, and that it, there is absolutely zero indication there was anything improper with the firearm sale. Most background checks, if there's no flag on it, take about 100 seconds, Robin Thomas, Executive Director of Gifford's Law Center, a national gun violence prevention advo advo advocacy group, told the mag. So you're talking about two minutes at most, and then you have your gun, and you can walk out the door with no training, no other kind of information, she added. Gifford's has given Georgia what has the highest... Fort 
the has the 14th highest gun death rate in the U.S. An F on its annual scorecard of gun laws in all 50 states. Yeah, is that legal? Per, legally purchased guns, or is that illegal like gang violence? Uh, <laughs> like seriously, it's um, laughable. This story here. Republicans lawmakers are now pushing for new legislation that would allow lawful weapon carriers to pack heat without a license. On Wednesday, Matthew Wilson, a Democratic Georgia state representative, said in a tweet that in Georgia it's easier to buy a gun than it is to vote. Milk Willin Willinski, another state representative, called for a law that requires a waiting period for gun buyers. I have never heard of someone in a rush to get a gun for a safe, good reason, he said in a tweet. Well, maybe to protect yourself. Say, like, um, you live in a bad neighborhood and maybe you need a gun in your home so you can be on the defense in case someone tries to break in or whatnot. I mean, that would be a pretty good reason. Say, maybe uh, you have an ex that's crazy and after you break up, they... Uh, threaten your life and you need to get protection right away that's another good reason it's it's pretty uh it's a no-brainer here 10 states in the district of columbia require waiting periods for gun purchase purchases with periods ranging from 72 hours in illinois to about 10 days in california and dc according to newsweek i would really encourage georgia and other states across the county or country to look at what happened here and think about what they could do in order to reduce our, or prevent such incidents from happening again. Igor Volsky, executive director of the Advocacy Group Guns Down America, told Outlet. Uh, he cited a 2017 study by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which found that waiting period laws that delay gun purchases by a few days reduce firearm homicides by about 17%. Yeah, sure they do. This is particularly pertinent, ob obviously, against the job backdrop of the spikes we've seen in hate crimes in this country. We're at a 10-year high, Volsky told Newsweek. In particular, the recent uptake, uptick in hate crimes against Asian Americans. Uh, look, like, whether or not you could, this guy gets a gun right away, if he wants to kill people, he's going to find a way to kill people. Preventing him from buying a gun is just taking one way of him killing people out of his hands, maybe. Or he could just wait. <laughs> I mean, he could have rammed into the Georgia Spa with his vehicle and killed people. He could have went in there with a knife and killed people. He could have took a hammer like there's anything. Like he could have used his hands and strangled one of the spa ladies while they were giving him a massage or something, you know? There's, there's, if someone wants to kill, they're going to do it. I mean... It's unfortunate, but it's a fact. Um, uh, next, where am I? Why the Atlanta spa shooting feels different. I learned what happened in Atlanta the old-fashioned way, out of the corner of my eye, on TV. We are covering late-breaking news of Georgia tonight, Rachel Maddow said on a show that was only intended to be background noise before dinner. And I have to warn you, it is disturbing news and it is devel a developing story. We'll skip past that part. It's, it's just old information. Okay. Okay, what happened in Atlanta feels different this time. We have an opportunity to realize mass shootings aren't unpreventable, but a product of our collective making and coming off the racial reckoning of 2020. 
We also have the tools to recognize the specific roots of this case. Back in February of 2020, an employee at the Molson Coors facility shot and killed five of his co-workers before killing himself. Though the story barely made the news, the week ran in a single story about it. The week ran a single story about it. The incident would end up being more remarkable than anyone realized at the time because it was both the first and the penum, penultimate, I don't even know that word, penultimate mass shooting of 2020. Other than a man who killed four people in a shooting spree across Springfield, Missouri on March 15th, there were, there were no other mass shootings defined by the Associated Press as events that leave four or more dead, not including the shooter. In all of, the 20, in all of 2020, the lowest number since 2006, though the pandemic was killing thousands of Americans, it had the grim upside of temporarily putting a halt on us killing each other at schools or concerts or houses of worship. After the hiatus, <clears throat> Then the Atlanta shooting feels uh, especially raw and shocking. Over the last year, our anesthesia wore off. At some imperceptible moment, we stopped expecting to hear about the next mass shooting. We let our guard down, and in doing so, our capacity to be horrified has returned. We are asking, as we so rarely do, what happened? I... I don't know. That part... That part there was, uh, I think, kind of basically why we weren't getting any shootings or anything last year. They wanted to let that anesthesia wear off and they could push their agendas easier this way by bringing back the shock of it. So I just, I thought that was pretty important to put in there. I'm gonna cough for a second here. <clears throat> Alright. Um, oh, there's been uh, some reporting of started here in South Korea's chosen Idbo newspaper that the gunman shouted kill all, Asi all Asians before opening fire. Um, there's no proof of that. It's just something that goes around. It's been, has been going around. Um, though the media often has good reason to be cautious about reporting the killer's motives, hedging that the shooting was seemingly or likely a hate crime, the public can read between the lines. Former President Donald Trump, after all, made a deliberate choice in the early days of the pandemic to wiggle out of the blame for his own gross mishandling of the crisis by pinning the situation in America and China. There is no mistaking Trump's intention either. He even famously crossed out the word corona in one of his March brief press briefings and scribbled in Chinese as a replacement. He's fueling these anti-Chinese sentiments among Americans, not caring that the people who will truly suffer the most are Chinese Americans and other Asian Americans, his citizens whom uh, he's supposed to protect. Carissa Chia, a psychology professor at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, told the Washington Post at the time. Close-up of President Real Donald Trump notes in his, his scene where he crossed the corona and replaced with Chinese virus as he speaks with his coronavirus task force today at the White House. <laughs> this is silly. It's all, you know, th oh, the theatrics. And look at the time there, 1133. Wonderful. Um, in turn, hate crimes against uh, Asian Americans spiked 149% in 2020, beginning in March and April, BuzzFeed News reports. And experts have reason to believe that the reported number of hate incidents is far lower than the actual numbers. 
though racism against Asian Americans is rooted in U.S. imperialism and the nation's historic embrace of white nationalism and xenophobia, and is not a new phenomenon. Racist agitators like Trump and Fox News enthusiastically fanned the flames during the pandemic, as Newsweek reports during the t a television appearance on Tuesday evening. The former president even repeated his use of popular anti-Asian slur <clears throat> within hours of a man murdering six Asian women. Uh, uh, so, it's really hilarious <clears throat> that they talk about nationalism and xenophobia of America white people when China and a lot of other Asian countries are famous for that do we want to compare immigration rates <laughs> uh, hello uh, Japan is in a population crisis because they're uh, they're not bre they're not having kids fast enough and they have such a small amount of um, immigration it's laughable I mean it's no different in China either their one child policy is really backfired on them and they uh, oh too have a very dismal immigra immigration rates but that's, that's going to change eventually especially in Japan they are considering changing that but I mean these those are just two countries that that have are just famously xenophobic and nationalist but they have the gall to turn it on us and turn on the American people and say that they are the ones when they have s the most diverse populations it's it's just such insanity and they like to use the Trump card when it comes to pushing the the Wuhan virus but uh, let me just grab this real quick. I'm just going to put the link in here. This is all happening at a time that we're starting to see a message shift here because you're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump Co., calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. Concern is growing this morning over an outbreak of a new SARS-like virus in China. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. What more can you tell us about the similarities or differences between SARS and the Wuhan coronavirus? The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus in China. The Wuhan uh, coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. From the Wuhan uh, coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus fears continue to grow over the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus Wuhan coronavirus the Wuhan coronavirus the Wuhan coronavirus we have new information about how the Wuhan coronavirus is spread tying coronavirus to China and Chinese people isn't just a racist dog whistle it's a whole racist orchestra it's a mighty mighty racist boss tone I hear Stephen Miller in this foreign virus setting up travel bans for the outside invasion of the disease that's not the, the way chinese coronavirus yeah, that they've that, been that's calling. not the first u.s case of chinese coronavirus the chinese coronavirus uh, this is coming as the chinese coronavirus china's coronavirus outbreak china's coronavirus outbreak anxiety the death toll nearly doubles in china's coronavirus outbreak china's coronavirus just how bad is china's coronavirus crisis china's coronavirus outbreak china's coronavirus outbreak China's coronavirus outbreak China's coronavirus China's coronavirus China's coronavirus China's coronavirus concerns about the China uh, coronavirus uh, it's gonna come across to a lot of Americans as smacking of a uh, xenophobia uh, right. to use that kind of term
That is what you call gaslighting. They get the American people all hyped up on the coronavirus and then turn around and say that they're racist and xenophobic and that they're that it's Trump and all that stuff. It's just just ridiculous. I think I'm gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon. Yep. So I will show a couple more things and then I'll come back later to do this. I'm gonna go to my Twitter. Because I have some screenshots and that'll save me time trying to find the links. Get out of this one. It's a bit slow right now. I got lots of links up here. Alright, so come on. Let's do it. Where you at? Where you at? Actually, I should point this out first. Um, it was very interesting that. Um, Whenever I was searching the victims for this, it always featured this lady, the white woman who's 33. I mean, this is not really surprising at all, but it is something. And she's interracial couple there, which is not a big not a problem at all. It's just interesting to note. I think he's was, is Filipino or something like that. I can't remember if I read it right. This is the Hispanic guy who injured. He wasn't killed. He's the only other one that was like featured on, or not featured, he was just sometimes shown, but not featured like this lady, Delena, or whatever her name is, Delena, um, I forget already, Delena. There's there. Again there. I think that I only had the four pictures up. Um... Sorry, one minute. Now, oh, what did I do with that article? I believe they've updated it. So I just need to get, grab the link real quick. Oh, man. It's just too many links, honestly. There's so much stuff. the link I guess switch over to my window again actually I don't want to get rid of that I'm gonna go over this one all right so BuzzFeed I believe they've added a photo of one of the Asian victims finally they have some Asian victims to show because they didn't have any for the longest time this is the Zhao G. Emily Tan. She looks like... How old is she? She doesn't look, uh... She looks fairly young there. Like in her 30s or something. Oh, f 49. This... If that's a recent photo, she's in great shape. Um, or was in great shape. Uh, an Asian woman. Am I off mute? Yeah, I'm off mute. An Asian woman who was the mother of a recent college graduate and the owner of multiple mo small businesses, as well as a woman who went to get a massage after working all day at a Waffle House, were two of eight people killed by a shooter who attacked three Atlanta area, area spas on Tuesday. Officials identified the two of the other people who were killed alongside 49 year old Zhao Ji Tan and 33 year old. Delena Ashley Young at Young's Asian Massage in Atworth uh, as Dayu Fang 44 and Paul Andre Michels 54. The other four victims, all of whom are Asian women, 
were shot and killed at two Atlanta spas across the street from each other. Officials have not identified them publicly, but a spokesperson with the Consulate General of the Republic of Korea in Atlanta told BuzzFeed News that four of the victims are of Korean descent. On Thursday, Atlanta Police Deputy Chief Charles Hampton Jr. said that the department will not yet release their names as officials are working with the consulate to get in touch with the women's next of kin before identifying them to the public. We just ask that you respect the families that are still mourning and some who may not even know yet, Hampton said. Police say they have not yet determined if the shootings were racially motivated, even though the suspect told investigators he said targeted, targeted the businesses which are marketed as Asian or international spas that promote their female and Asian oper- employees because he viewed them as outlets for his sex addiction. But many have pointed to the hypersexualization of and racism against Asian women in the suspect's decision to target the spas and have criticized law enforcement's hesitancy to call the shootings racially motivated. <laughs> yeah, you just need to label it right away. I mean, they're already doing that because all these celebrities and politicians are just labeling it as such, and so there you got your motive. It's labeled. Happy? Tan was the registered owner of Young's Asian Massage, busy working at her small business with the shooter ki- when the shooter killed her. Uh, Justin, picture of Zio G. I hope I was saying it properly. Zio G. Emily Tan. She owned Young Asians Massage. She was one of four killed in the Cherokee County. Story. Uh, friends say victim of shooting rampage at Metro Atlanta Spas was mother of recent UGA grad. Tan is also known as Emily and was the sweetest, most kind-hearted, giving, never met a stranger person. Never met a stranger person. A friend. What? Uh, Okay. Her daughter recently graduated from University of Georgia. Her friend, Greg Heinsen, told USA Today. Heinsen said he saw Tan as a, as a massage therapist for years for his neck and back issues, and they became friends. An entrepreneur, Tan was a registered owner of several small businesses, including another spa seven miles away from the one where she was killed, and tan- a tanning salon on Thursday. An employee of that spa declined to speak with BuzzFeed News. You know, she's doing pretty damn good considering she's a small business. With, you know, with the whole lockdown stuff. I don't know, is Georgia even one of those states that was doing the lockdown stuff? I don't know. I, you'd have to tell me that because I don't know and I don't really feel like researching that right now. Okay, so she, yeah, she was, had a bunch of businesses and such. Okay. Uh, BuzzFeed News is still working to learn more about the people who were killed in the shootings. Red Canary Song, a grassroots collective of Asian sex workers, released a statement on Thursday about the shootings and called for rights and protections for spa workers. We see the effort to invisible, invisibilize these women's gender, labor, class, and immigration status as a refusal to reckon with the legacy of U- United States imperialism and as a desire to collapse the identities of migrant Asian women, sex workers, massage workers, and trafficking survivors, it reads. The women who were killed faced specific racialized gender, uh, gendered violence for being Asian women and massage workers. The statement continues, how do you know that? You're just assuming that because of their race. It's just ridiculous. And profession, that is. Whether or not they were actually sex workers or self-identified under that label, we know that as massage workers, they were subjected to sexualized violence stemming from the hatred of sex workers, Asian women, working class people, and immigrants. Oh, man. 
And yeah, I'll go on and go. I'm not going to read this. I will study this for next time. And give you more on that. Just found that interesting. Especially with the sex workers coming out because... I will just pop in and show you real quick. Uh, which one it, was it? Also on the 17th, in Toronto, we have... Come on, guys, so slow. Toronto sex shops start court fight to be considered essential during lockdowns. Also on the 17th. I mean, I'm, the shooting was 16th, but everything came on the 17th. Everything, all the stuff started being pushed on the 17th. So it's basically the 17th, in my opinion. The actual shooting was the 16th, but all the other stuff, all the agendas were really being pushed on the 17th. So the owners of multiple Toronto sex shops have filed an application for injunction, injunctive, injunctive relief to have sex work toys recognized as legitimate medical supplies under the Reopening Ontario Act. The province and the city say the shops are not essential business under the Act and the in Interpreting the legislation to let sex shops stay open would open the proverbial floodgates for other businesses with similar arguments, weakening the effectiveness of lockdown restrictions, which are not effective at all, even the who admits that. The, so, yeah, that's just stupid. Veronica can... This is all the... Uh, I don't know. Owner of the Nookie on College Street was ticketed in late 2020 for remaining open. She said she opened because many of the products she sells are prescribed by health professionals to treat a range of conditions. Uh, she also carries safe sex products, some of which are spe specially specialty items that can't be found in pharmacies. Well, I need water. Okay. At that time, I'm not going to say her name. Told the star that she called Ontario's Ontario's Stop the Spread business hotline and was told that her business qualified to stay open. She also consulted the lockdown legislation, which calls business, businesses that sell rent or repair, assistive mobility, and medical devices, aids, and or supplies essential. Now, what's her name? And Petra. Labruto of the stag shop chain asked the province to recognize their stores as essential during the pandemic. Their court documents asked the province to recognize that they are safety supply stores and businesses to sell, re rent to repair, medical devices, yada, yada, yada. And yes, yeah, so it's just interesting timing that those two stories come out at the same time. They have a relation to spas and the sex shops and why not I also, before I go get back to my Twitter because there was another thing I wanted to show you about 33 oh first off the police said that um, again so Reynolds said possible racial animus toward the victims six of whom were Asian women did not appear to be the motive instead describing the victims as targets of opportunity so again there, there's that racist racial link is not there it has not been found to be there yet they they're trying but it's not there here's an interesting uh, a bunch of 33s so we have the the first victim that they showcase everywhere Delaney on a white woman WW 33 her age 33 boom 33 then this is crazy so there's the locations of the shootings so one and two and three are really close and that's where they caught the suspect right what are the coordinates of said shooting places the second shooting and the third shooting are in 33 <laughs> and also when they caught him in Crisp County that's a 33 plus they also uh, Cherokee County is a 33 so it's 33 galore with this whole incident 
Um, yeah. It's time to wrap this up. I will wrap it at an hour 30. I got three minutes. And with that, I will show you one more interesting link I discovered uh, while I was prepping for this show. It's back to the original video I showed you. To, to today. Come on. Uh, you're slow. In the U.S., eight people were killed. And that uh, was an issue with porn and... The number, 1907, okay? That's on, I believe it's the aromatherapy uh, spa, 1907. Now there is a news report that's out, because you know, anything that happens in America happens to Canada, and conveniently, this whole thing, and we'll get into this whole thing next or tomorrow or whatever whenever I can record again we'll get into this whole thing but this here reports of anti-Asian hate crimes are surging in Canada during the COVID-19 pandemic this is um I don't want to play this right now there was a a study that came out It's, this is the one, the link. Just make sure it's the right link. So stats can. No, this is, this is not the right one. Hold on. Where does it say it? Uh, the group that put this together is called Project 1907. <laughs> I mean, you can't shit up. 1907. Project 1907, which is uh, Racism Incident Reporting Center. That is, had participated in the study or whatever, collected the reporting. And the 1907 is uh, actually to do with. Oh, I don't have the link anymore. It was actually why they chose that name was there was uh, anti-Asian riots back in 1907 in Vancouver, BC. But can you believe that? It's just the wildest thing. You can't make that up. 1907. 1907. <laughs> There's a link between the states and Canada here. It's freaking weird. There's more stuff. There's so much more stuff I gotta go through. But I'll save that for another day. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. I really appreciate it. And, you know, feel free to uh, share it. Anything you find in this, if you do look at this yourself, share it with me, please. Because I am collecting everything I can to do the, the hard work of breaking down these uh, events that take place. You know, people's lives do get lost in these situations. Not all the time, but this one doesn't, I don't really see a reason that they're fake, but there's a lot of weird stuff that needs to be pointed out.